we want to welcome you to the Four Points broadcast with Dr. Cindy Trim. I'm Pastor Ryan, and if you clicked on this video, you didn't do it by accident. It's because God has a word for you. This is a divine appointment, and you came at a, a good time because tonight we're starting a brand new series. Dr. Trim is going to be talking about the Beatitudes, and it's going to be incredible. It's going to be transformative, so much so that you're going to want to hit that share button because when you're transformed, you want to make sure all of your best friends are also <laughs> transformed with you. You're only as fast as your slowest person. Who you surround yourself with is very important. Go ahead and hit that share button right now and make sure you comment. When you get a nugget of revelation, just go ahead and type it in that comment button. If you're at cindytrimministries.org, go ahead and hit that prayer button. If you feel like you need prayer, one of our intercessors is standing by in a private chat room ready to cover your need. It's going to be an impactful night. We declare that the heavens are opened up, not only over this space but it's opened up wherever you are right now. Whether your kitchen, your living room, wherever you're listening to this from, the heavens are open and the Lord is getting ready to, you, to speak to you. So get ready and take notes as we welcome to the platform, Dr. Cindy Trim. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. We are so excited to do life with you. This is my life group, and we are beaming live from Atlanta, Georgia. Some of the best and the brightest are resident here in Atlanta, Georgia. And we are so happy to have the opportunity to be sharing with you and to encourage you. I'm excited about the new series that we're preaching on uh, concerning the Beatitudes, and in particular, we are going to be teaching and preaching on for the next couple of weeks living your best life living your best life and living your blessed life and if I were to choose a an overall topic it's just the topic of the blessed life the blessed life the blessed life Let's pray. Our Father and God, we give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for uh, what you have done for us and what you will continue to do for us. For he that hath begun a good work in us shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It was Peter that encouraged us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we are growing up into the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. And a part of the life that you have called us to live is a blessed life. You taught your disciples through the Beatitudes. And tonight we are introducing your sons and your daughters, hallelujah, to just some basic principles for living a blessed life. Not yesterday, but now. Not just tomorrow, but now. And we decree and declare now, Father, that the heavens will be open over us, that you would think through my mind, speak through my lips, that there will be none of me and all of you. Bless our time together. Open up the word of God. Encourage, inspire, motivate. Reveal yourself as the mighty God in our midst. Let no one leave this, this teaching without having a, an encounter with you. Let your presence be felt. Rearrange our lives. Give us breakthrough. Empower us so that we can live life, Father, according to your original plan and purpose. And in advance, we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 18. And as you were turning there, it's imperative to understand that we're, we're, we're talking about one of a, a quartet of writers, or there were four writers that wrote the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Of course, the books are named after them. When you read the book of Mark, we're talking about, it, it really focuses on um, relationships. And, and then Luke speaks about kingdom economics, biblical finances. And, and John or uh, John uh, speaks about um, leadership. And so it's, it's imperative, uh, or Mark speaks about servant leadership, excuse me. And so it's Mark speaks about servant leadership. Luke speaks about kingdom economics, biblical finances. John speaks, uh, interestingly enough, about how Jesus actually led. And, and he led through uh, uh, relationships altogether. But when you 
get to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, it, it, it's about the king and his kingdom, what the kingdom looks like, what, what the kingdom looks like, the privileges of citizens. If you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, this book is going to talk to you about kingdom citizenship. And so it's interesting when we talk about kingdom citizenship, we, we, we look at the quartet again. Matthew is about the king and his kingdom. Mark is about leadership or servant leadership in particular. Luke is about kingdom economics, biblical finances, and, and, and John is about relationships. So if you want to know anything about uh, relationship, read the book of John. You will see Jesus epitomizing relationships, how he, he moved in and out of relationships and how he blessed them and added value to their lives. When you back up to the book of Luke, it's all about kingdom economics, biblical finances, and economics is, of course, the science or the study of, of resources and how resources are used, distributed, and how they actually um, enhance the lives of individuals. We understand that there are no limited resources in the kingdom of heaven. But if you want to know anything about kingdom economics, biblical finances, then you read the book of Luke. If you want to know about servant leadership, how to lead um, according to the biblical standards of leadership, you look at the life of Jesus and throughout that book of Mark, you're going to see how to be become an impactful, transformational leader. And then you back up even further and you look at the book of Matthew. It's all about the king and his kingdom. We recognize that we serve a God who views us as his sons and daughters. You're, there's no adopted child in the kingdom, thank God. There's no stepchildren, or I should say there are no stepchildren. We're all adopted, but there are no stepchildren in the kingdom. And you know, very seldom do you find that once a parent or a person adopts a child, that that child actually looks like them. But it's interesting because everyone that is adopted in the kingdom eventually looks like Jesus. The Bible said that we're going to be transformed into his image and into his likeness. We pick up his DNA and then in the realm of the spirit, we're going to be transformed to look like him. So the king and the kingdom out of the book of Matthew. But in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 18 from which we're going to extrapolate our text, the blessed life. And uh, your, your blessed life is going to be your best life. But to extrapolate the principles, we're going to take our time and we're going to begin to really excavate this text. It's, it's so pregnant um, with revelation. It's, 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 it's imperative to understand that, that this text is going to set the tone for your attitude. Now, when we talk about attitude, uh, you refer to airplanes having an attitude. And the attitude of an airplane determines its path and its altitude. So if the nose's attitude is pointing towards the earth, you know it's going to go towards the earth. But if the attitude of the airplane is going up or pointed up, it's going to go higher. And so this is your attitude. The attitude determines not only your altitude, but the path that your life is going to flow on. And we are decreeing and declaring that God is going to begin to tweak your attitude until it is in perfect alignment with his original plan and purpose. You are not going to be out of sync in this season. And I'm decreeing and declaring that even as a computer, hallelujah, is, 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 is tweaked and the viruses are removed, I decree and declare any demonic or satanic virus that has been planted in your attitude is being removed right now in Jesus' name. You don't sound that excited to me. Oh, yes. You're going to have a change in your attitude, your attitude towards life, your attitude towards God, the attitude towards yourself, the attitude towards the world, the attitude towards people. And not only is your attitude going to be adjusted, people's attitude towards you is going to be adjusted too. I've discovered that when I can no longer change the things around me, I can change myself and be the change I want to see. Whenever you be 
begin to adjust yourself, whenever you begin to change and allow the Holy Spirit to change you, people may not immediately change, but they're going to be forced to change based on your change. They're going to have to accommodate who you're becoming, not who you were. I decree and declare that people that rejected you last season is going to be forced to celebrate you this season because God is going to give you an attitude shift. Someone shout shift. shift. Lay hands on yourself and say shift. shift. Yes, everything, your attitude, your attitude towards money, your attitude towards leadership. Your attitude is going to change because if you change your attitude, you change your altitude. If you change your attitude, you change the way your life flows. And if it's been flowing in the wrong direction, well, get ready. It's getting ready to flow in the right direction. And not only is it going to flow in the right direction, only good is going to flow towards you. You are going to live a blessed life, and it starts right now. Someone shout, I decree it, and I declare it, and it is so in Jesus' name. Yes, the blessed life is not just for some of us. The blessed life is for all of us. It's for all of us. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 18, you should have gotten there by now. The Bible said, in seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he sat, his disciples came unto him. Usually, you have depicted the be- in, in the Beatitudes uh, portraits where uh, artists have portrayed the Beatitudes, and you usually see Jesus elevated on a rock or elevated on a mountain with throngs of people, millions of people, or thousands of people, or hundreds of people, standing and listening to the Beatitudes. This is how it's depicted. But according to the scripture, it doesn't say that there were millions that followed him. And we could trace this all the way back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, it's the Beatitudes. And then you're going to see Jesus just giving us an understanding of what the kingdom looks like, what to expect in the kingdom. Seeing, seeing, the Bible said, seeing the multitudes, he went up into a high place, and then of course his disciples followed him. But if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 8, verses 1, that 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 portrait, that artistic portrait of Jesus speaking to multitudes and multitudes, that that portrait now is, is totally destroyed. And it's destroyed because scripture is very specific with the words. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 1, it says, when he came down from the mountains, great multitudes followed him. So it's interesting in chapter uh, 5, verses 1, it says that when he was set down, he, the, the disciples followed him. But when he came down, the multitudes followed him. In other words, God is going to share secrets and principles and strategies with those who expend the energies. In other words, if you are lazy and you're lazy as a Christian, you're going to miss some nuggets that can revolutionize your life, that can revolutionize your finances, that can revolutionize your ministry, that can revolutionize your marriage, that can revolutionize your business. God wants to share some secrets with you, but he's only going to share it with the disciples. I've discovered that most people follow Jesus, but they're following him for the the miracles, the signs, the wonders, and the multiplying of the bread. If he's not turning water into wine, if he's not multiplying the bread and the fishes, if he's not healing the sick, if he's not walking on water, very few people want to sit at the feet of Jesus to become a disciple. To me, the, the word disciples comes from a root word, discipline. In other words, this is a season of discipline. I decree and declare you living an undisciplined life is over. I decree you are going to be a disciple of Jesus. You are now a 
officially uh, been accepted in the school of the spirit. You have been accepted in the university of kingdom living. I decree and declare you are going to graduate from this university with a PhD in kingdom living, with a PhD in dominion, with a PhD in, 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 in a blessing, with a PhD in success, with a PhD in prosperity, because wherever the kingdom is, healing is there, success is there, prosperity is there, dominion is there. Your days of living outside of the realm of dominion is over. Your, your season of miracles is here. Oh, yes. You're going to be a student. And you're going to be a good student. Lay hands on yourself and say, I have capacity. You see, the day that you got saved, God didn't tell you to check your mind out at the door. That you cannot come in, uh, you know, with your mind. He said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And so the gospel is preached to build capacity in you. Not just spiritual capacity, but intellectual capacity. You've got to think differently. You've got to be able to think like a leader. You've got to think like you're the head and not the tail, first and not last, above and not beneath. And not only should you think like it, you should act like it. You should have the attitude of someone that is going somewhere, someone that has something to say, someone that has, is, has a reason for living in this earth. And you learn these things as a disciple of Christ. Lay hands on yourself and say, teach me, Lord. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to know what it means to be a Christian. I want to know what it means to have authority. I want to know what it means to have favor. I want to know what it means to walk with signs and wonders following the preaching of the gospel. I want to know what it means, God. Teach me. I have capacity. Teach me, Lord. Make me a disciple. Make me a disciple. Seeing the multitudes. There's a whole bunch of people that sit in church. But how many of them are coming to church because they want to be a disciple? I want to learn. Never stop learning. That should be your lifelong pursuit. Lifelong pursuit should be learning more, learning more about God. The Bible said those that do know their God shall be what? Strong and do what? Great exploits. Your, your days of doing little and insig in insignificant things are over. Your days of doing big things are here. You're going you're gonna to do big things for God. And you're going you're gonna to do great exploits for God. No more small thinking. Lay hands on yourself. Enlarge my territory. Your days of thinking small is over. Your days of being satisfied with where you are is over. This is good enough. No, it's not. No, especially once you learn what God has in store for you. Glory to God. You're going to get your ability to dream again. You're going to have visions, hallelujah, that is going to blow you out of the water. And you're going to wake up with huge faith to begin to see those visions and dreams coming to pass. I decree and declare the season of just dreaming is over. I decree the season of living the life of your dreams are here. I establish it. I legislate it. I decree it. I quicken it. I call it to life by the word, by the blood by the spirit and it shall be so let the church say amen. amen glory to God give your neighbor a high five say that's for me that's for me oh yes I'm gonna live my blessed life I'm gonna live my blessed life ask your neighbor when you're gonna live it tell him now glory to God ask the person behind you when you gonna live it Right now. I'm not letting another moment go. If there's such a thing as a blessed life, I want it and I want it now. And if the devil tries to get in my way, I just will have to run him over. 
You've been struggling. You've been crying. You've been mourning. But God says you're going to live a blessed life in spite of the loss, in spite of the mourning, in spite of the persecution, in spite of the setback. You are going to live a blessed life. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. I'm not giving up another blessing. The devil could go to hell. I'm going to say that blessing belongs to me. I'm not going to ask you to give it back. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and I'm going to take it by. That blessing belongs to me. That blessing, reach up and pull it down. That blessing belongs to me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Ask him, do you want to know what a blessed life feels like? Ask them. Say, rub shoulders with me. This is what a blessed life feels like. You're rubbing shoulders with a blessed person. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my down setting. I'm blessed in my uprising. I am blessed going out, coming in, after a war, before a war. I'm blessed. Just blessed. Ain't nothing you could do about it. I'm blessed. Wake up every day. I'm blessed. I'm blessed seeing the multitudes. They just wanted the, the miracles, the signs, the wonders. They didn't want to discipline themselves. This is a season of discipline. This is a season of discipline. If you're going to fast, fast now. If you're going to go on a consecration, go on a consecration. If you're going to pray, pray. Pray with all your might. This is a season of discipline. If you have a vision, you're going to have to wake up every single morning. And you're going to have to take action. You're going to have to stop your wistful thinking and take immediate a a action. Take, take big steps. And if you cannot see the whole path, put your foot out and the first step will reveal itself. Are you with me? Take the first step and the next step will reveal itself to you. Are you with me? You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have all the money. You don't have to have written all the book. You don't have to have all the capital to start your business. If you don't have the capital to start it, at least write the name of your business. What is your business name? If you don't have the down payment for the house, at least figure out where you want to live. If you ain't married, at least figure out the day you want to be married. If your boo hasn't come, <laughs> figure out the day. Go and, and pick out your wedding garment. Pick, call Sue and say, you're going to be in my wedding. Get your bridesmaid. Figure out the menu for the reception. Are you with me? Tell everybody, you all can't come now. Only 100 of you. <laughs> this is a wedding. I'm not trying to feed the poor. <laughs> Are you with me? Take some definitive steps towards it. Take action. Are you with me? Living a blessed life requires attitude and action. Attitude and action. Just don't sit there. Pick yourself up. Do something. Engage your energies. Make sure that your focus, you know, wherever, wherever your focus flows, energy goes. So, so, so if you don't want energy flowing in the direction of the disaster, you got to figure out where is God working and, and, and focus on him in the midst of it. And when you, wherever, wherever your focus goes, your energy flows. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on what he's saying about you and saying to you or what the devil is saying about you and the devil saying to you? Wherever your focus goes, your energy flows. And so the more you, you spend, the longer you spend in the presence of God with him teaching you, the more energy you're going to have. I decree and declare. Let me prophesy. I decree God is restoring your energy. 
You are not going to be tired anymore. You're not going to be. Someone is being delivered right now. I rebuke the spirit of heaviness. I rebuke the spirit of suicide. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I command the spirit of heaviness to go. You are going to have energy. You are not going to be lethargic. You are not going to be tired. You are not going to be sleepy. You are not going to be overwhelmed. You are going to have the energy of a two-year-old. Oh, yes. You're going to have the energy to pursue purpose. You're going to have the energy to serve God. You're going to have the energy to pray. You're going to have the energy to fast. You're going to have the energy to worship. You're going to have the energy to start your business. You're going to have the energy to write your book. You're going to have the energy to preach. I decree energy is flowing. Someone shake yourself, shake yourself. I see deliverance. I can see it coming over you. That heaviness is lifting. That depression is lifting. That despondency is lifting. Raise your hand and shout, I'm blessed. And I'm blessed right now. Oh, yes. My mind is blessed. My eyes are blessed. My ears are blessed. My nose is blessed. My mouth is blessed. My heart is blessed. My feet are blessed. My hands are blessed. My relationships are blessed. My ministry is blessed. My pocketbook is blessed. My bank account is blessed. I decree and declare my children are blessed. My wife is blessed. My husband is blessed. My pastor Pastor is blessed. The choir is blessed. The members of the church is blessed. Everybody associated with me is blessed. You're going to be a blessing to this world. You're going to be a blessing to your family. You're going to be a blessing to your pastor. You're going to be a blessing to the church. You're going to have blessings running over you. Yes. In fact, I decree and declare a season of scandalous blessings. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Everybody's going to be talking about it like a scandal. Did you hear that Cindy Trim was blessed with a fill in the blank? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What are people going to hear? Tell your neighbor. They're going to hear, did you hear that? Fill in your name. What are you blessed with? Woo! Did you hear? Did you hear? Verse number two. <laughs> Verse number two, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, you got to be taught. I've learned, you know, I knew how to navigate the realm of poverty, but I had to learn how to navigate the realm of prosperity. I had to be taught. You see, a lot of times we remain where we are because we don't have someone in our lives to teach us. I've also discovered discovered this, that most people keep trade secrets to their chest. But Jesus never keeps a trade secrets. He's going to tell everything. And I'm here to tell everything. And the first thing I want you to know is it's possible for all of us to be blessed. Oh, yes. When I discovered that God wanted to bless me with abundance, what? You mean my days of lack is over? Yes. And it doesn't matter who God uses to bless you. I don't get caught up whether the Muslim or black or green or blue or whether they hate me. I decree and declare your haters will now become your blessers. They're going to say, I don't like you, but I just feel like I need to bless you. Don't be caught up. Stop crying to hate me. God can turn things around and cause even your haters to be a blessing to you. You're going to be so blessed. You're going to, you, 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 everywhere you go, blessings is going to avail itself. You're going to be tapping into the source of blessing, which is 
Jesus Christ himself, God himself. These are all blessers and the Holy Spirit. Jesus opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom. Blessed are ye when men shall revile and persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. Ye are the light, the salt of the earth. But if salt have lost its savor, wherewith it shall be salted, it is thenceforth good for nothing. Let me just say this parenthetically, because I'm going to do a lot with the blessings. Two points. The Bible says the word shall, 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 shall in the Beatitudes. You notice that? That is a refutable word of promise irrefutable that is an irrefutable word of promise it is an irrefutable word of promise it is an ear it cannot be reversed it cannot be revoked revoked it cannot be changed when you see the world shall it means that God will move heaven and earth on your behalf to make that happen do you understand that when he said I shall You could take that to the bank. In other words, circumstances don't dictate to the blessing. So wherever your focus goes, your energy flows. You're putting too much energy into fixing what is wrong. Too much energy, too much energy in negativity. Where is your focus? My focus is on the blessing. So guess what? That's where my energy is going to flow. Wherever my energy flows, my life goes. Wherever my focus flows, wherever my focus goes, energy flows. Wherever energy flows, my life goes. So why would I focus on somewhere that I don't want my life to flow in? I don't want my life to flow into poverty, so I don't try to eliminate poverty. What do I want? I want wealth. So what do I I spend my energy doing? Building wealth. I'm not trying to eliminate sin. I'm trying to live a righteous life. So I'm not sin conscious. I'm righteousness conscious. How can I live for you, God? How can I please you, God? Not how can I eliminate. I don't know who's sinning. Why? Because that's not what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on my right standing with God. God, what pleases you? I don't, I, don't, I don't preach messages about the 10 compartments of hell. I want to talk to you about heaven. Why? Because I don't plan to go to hell. I want to know how to go to heaven. Show me the path of what? Righteousness. It's what I want to know about. More, whatever you focus in, focus on increases in value in your life. Whatever you focus on increases in value in your life. I want to focus on Jesus. I want to focus on giving. I want to focus on serving God. I want to focus on touching the mother, the, the homeless and the destitute and the widower and the orphan. I want to focus on those things. I don't know what half the church is doing. I know what God is doing. Amen. Ask me about God. People call me and say, did you know? No, I didn't know. Why? Because I wasn't interested. I can tell you about what God is doing. Do you, are you always that deep? Always that deep. <laughs> always. I had such a great time yesterday. The first day of my consecration, I'm on consecration for 24 days. I had such a revelation. 
I was up until 6 o'clock in the morning pulling down that revelation. This morning. Having a great time. And what God was revealing to me, I was just executing it. Woe be unto my staff. You up? <laughs> yes. What time is it? 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I need you to do this. Really? Yes. Wake up. Why? God never slumbers or sleep. Try to be like him. <laughs> you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt is lost as savior, we would shall be salted. In other words, we don't have a salt problem in the world. There's salt all over the earth. There's Christians all over the earth. But what makes salt salty? It's its nature. So what, the, what this is saying is that the believer has lost touch with their nature. They're not salty anymore. We got salt. But the essence of who we are as believers and Christians, as problem solvers and change agents, as moral agents, of, uh, as visionary transformational leaders, where are the transformational leaders? Where are the visionaries well, that are Christians? Where are they? Where are the Christian lawyers and the Christian doctors? The word Christian is not a noun, it's an adjective. An adjective describes a noun. It's just a description of who you are. So when you say Christian, Christian what? Amen. I'm a preacher. I just want to know if you're a Christian preacher. <laughs> are you with me? Are you born again? Are you a born again Christian? I'm a Christian. Are you born again? That's the first question I ask. I'm a Christian. Are you born again? Because the hot thing is to be a Christian now, right? You get these um, uh, recording artists high, high on whatever they're high on, right? And they say, first of all, I want to thank the Lord, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What? I just saw you bump and grind. <laughs> I just saw you sing Anaconda. I just, I just and you're what? I thank the Lord. We want salty Christians. We want the proof of your Christianity. Now, part of that is God blessing you. Part of that saltiness is God blessing you and then you being a blessing to the world, being a blessing to your family, being a blessing in your industry. You should be carrying the wisdom of God to your industry. Listen, Christians should not have the worst jobs within their industry. They should have the best jobs. Amen. I decree and declare you will no longer work in the, in the worst jobs in your industry. From today onward, you're going to rise to the top. It's going to be meteoric, and you're going to have the best jobs within your industry. Yes. Stop saying that i I, I got to leave the secular world because I want to serve God. But what have you been doing all this time? <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, stop playing. stop playing. Wherever God plants you, he wants to prosper you. You can serve God within your industry. You can serve God as a lawyer. You can serve God as a politician. You can serve God as a doctor. Listen, right now, we need medical breakthroughs. We need medical miracles. And, and, and we're best to look for a medical miracle than a surgeon or a doctor who's anointed with the gift of healing. The pharmaceuticals can heal you. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick to the protocol, but I can lay hands. Yeah. Nobody's going to know it because I'm going to up, wash up and scrub up. Are you with me? Yeah. But I've already prayed for you before I cut you. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And so when I go there, my hands are anointed. Yeah. Ben Carson had anointed hands. I decree upon every doctor, every Christian doctor, that your hands are anointed. Can you imagine that Daniel went, was given a scholarship to the best university in the world, the University of Babylon. And he rose up and he graduated magnum cum laude, the first in his, in, in his class. And, and, and God raised him up through the political ranks to become a president. He, listen, he, he took political science and put it on steroids. 
I decree and declare upon every politician that is a Christian that God is going to download wisdom that is going to heal the social ills and you are going to pass legislation that is going to bless the masses. Are you, are you with me? No more salt, less salt. Wherever God has planted you, I decree and declare you are going to affect positive change until the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. You are going to be the best in the industry. You're going to be the best filmmaker, the best videographer, the best doctor, the best lawyer, the best secretary, the best truck driver. You're going to drive trucks so good that you're going to own the whole truck driving industry. You're going to start out with mom and pop, and then God is going to give you the ability to create a monopoly. Amen. Say amen. amen. God is going to take your, your mom and pop set up and make it Wall Street friendly, globally scalable, until you have a monopoly. You are going, listen, you are going to go public. People are going to be buying shares in your company. I see people buying and trading your brand on Wall Street. Why you just got to sell knockoffs? <laughs> That's the best you could do. It looks real. <laughs> but everybody knows that, you know, Gucci is not the G's backwards. They're into like, we could tell that's not a real Gucci. Why Christians only want to sell knockoffs? Why can't you really own a bona fide Gucci store? And why we only want to sell to one another? Why can't you legitimately take your goods and your wares and your services because it's only Christians that will buy mediocrity? So you're mediocre. You got to keep it in the kingdom. Not if it's mediocre. I, don't, I want leather. I don't want pleather. I want the real thing. I don't want to look alike. I don't want to knock off. God didn't give you a knockoff anointing, a knockoff salvation. He gave you the real McCoy. We've got to get our saltiness back. We've got to be the best in the industry. You are blessed to be the best. Turn to your neighbor and say, she's talking about me. You're the salt of the earth. But if the salt lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? Watch this. It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of man. My God. You know what that means? To be trodden under the foot of man? It means people perceive you as the worst in the industry. They don't even see your worth. You, you, you have no voice around the table. They will not invite you around the boardroom. They don't see your value. They just discount your voice. You're discounted. Your gifts are discounted. Your voice is discounted. People ignore you. Even if you're talking, they ignore you. That's what, what it means to be trodden underfoot. But your days of being ignored are over. Amen. Shout, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. So who knows you? I know you know a lot of people. I see it on the Facebook. They, you took a, pic, a lot of pictures with a lot of people. But let me go on the, that person's Facebook. Do they have a picture of you? See, you got a picture of all these people. Do they have a picture of you? You got everybody's number. But do they have your number? You call them, but do they call you back? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Can I speak to uh, Bill Gates? Can, could you leave your number? Thank you very much. He's not available. You've been waiting for 10 years. Hi, he's not available. Hi, he's not available. Hi, he's not available. I decree your days of dropping people's name and taking photo ops to prove your worth is over. 
I decree your days of people dropping your name and taking photo ops with you is here. That yes sounds suspicious. No, it sounds suspicious to me. That hallelujah, one person said hallelujah. I don't know if you're in a state of shock or what. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Turn to your neighbor and say, she's talking about me. Turn to her, them and say, she's talking about me too. You're not the only one. Take a picture with me now. I'm telling you. You're the light of the world. You're a luminary. You're bigger than life. He put you like a city on a hill. You are not going to be missed. He's going to make you bigger than life. Your name is going to be bigger than life. And your name is going to be in lights. You're going to be a headliner. You're a city that is set on a hill that cannot be here. Neither do man light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Why are you dumbing down? What's up with this false humility? When someone compliments you, you look pretty. Oh, I don't look, you know, I didn't put on my makeup. My weave is just 10 years old. But you still look pretty with your 10-year-old weave. Can't you say thank you? Learn how to say thank you. Take compliments. Your dress looks nice. This is old. Your dress looks nice. This is tight. But it still looks night, nice, old and tight. <laughs> you lost weight? No, I put on weight. I'm 50 pounds heavier than what I was at six. We're all 50 pounds heavier than what we were at six. Say thank you. Then you wonder why nobody ever compliments you. Because every time you say, no, I ain't, you're saying, people, you don't have good judgment. And people are insulted by that. It may not be conscious, but it's subconscious. So the next time they see you, they don't compliment you. Why? Because something says, I don't want to be insulted. Turn to your neighbor and say, you is kind. <laughs> you is smart. And you is important. And say, thank you. Blessed, convincing people that they're blessed in spite of their circumstances takes a lot of negotiation because when you cannot change your circumstances, change yourself and the circumstances will change to accommodate your change. You can't change the dynamics in your relationships. Change yourself. The people in your relationship will have to change to accommodate your change. I am changed. I'm not the girl I used to be. I'm changed. I can sing. At least I think I can. <laughs> I haven't got a recording contract, but they're going to catch up. I hit notes that they never heard before. <laughs> You're going to change. And by the time we get through the teaching on the Beatitudes, your attitude is going to alter your altitude, which is going to alter the trajectory of your life and the force of favor and the flow of blessing is going to collide with you on a day-to-day -day basis. The Bible says, let your light so shine before man. Be brilliant. Be all that. She thinks she's all that plus a bag of chips and a dip on the dog. No, I don't think it. I know it. I leave the thinking for you. I'm letting my light so shine. I can't do everything good, but I could do some things good. And the some things that I'm good at, I'm good at. And I'm not going to lie about not being good at it. Now, I may not be able to sing. Ain't good at that. But I can preach. And I'm good at that. I'm good at something. You're good at something. What are you good at? 
What are you good at? Are you good at talking? Are you good at cooking? Are you good at smiling? Are you good at preaching? Are you good at dancing? You may not be good at everything, but you're good at something. And whatever you're good at, let your light shine. That man might see your what? Good work and do what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, when you don't shine like you should shine, you cannot bring glory to God. You got to be able to essentially do what God has called you to do, anointed you to do, and do it to the best of your ability. Girl, you better shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill it. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth passes away. Watch this. Not one jot or tittle. What's a jot or a tittle? The dot on the top of the I and the cross and the T. Not one jot, not one tittle. Shall in no wise pass from this law till it be fulfilled. What? Say it again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth passes, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it be fulfilled. What are you saying? What? I haven't come to destroy it, but to fulfill, fill it full, or give it back its true meaning. Why? Because the teachings of Christ have been bastardized. They've been contaminated. They've been twisted to control. Qu twisted to divide and conquer. But he said, no more divide and conquer. No more you, me, big chief, and you little Indians. All of us are big chiefs. No more, I'm highly favored, but you have no favor. As if favor is for some of us and not all of us. What? The devil is a liar. Favor is for all of us. We are living in a dispensation of grace. Wherever you find grace, you find favor. Because the words are interchangeable and they're synonymous. So that means if grace is being dispensed in this dispensation, so is favor. Reach up and pull it down. Oh yes, I'm favored. I'm favored. Wherever I go, and not only am I favored, wherever I go, I favor people. I extend favor to people. I, was, I, I spent my birthday in, in, in um, uh, where was I? Uh, Dubai. I spent my birthday in Dubai. And so I was leaving Dubai, and I saw this woman and her son just sitting there. And every single day, I do a, a kind act to, uh, towards someone who can never return the favor. Like, I'm not expecting anything back from them. But I am expecting something back from God. Given it shall be given you. Where does your future come from? It comes from your past and pre present actions and attitude. Where does your future come from? Where does the future blessing come from? It comes from your past actions and attitude. So I did something or I thought something. That's where it's coming from. So I wanted to set into motion blessings in my life. So every day I'm a blessing to someone. Every single day. Every day of my life. I do it consciously and deliberately. Because every day I want a blessing. So I, 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 I board first class. And I, I, I almost have 3 million miles on Delta, almost 3 million miles. Trouble almost, almost 3 million miles. That's not with a, not, that doesn't include American and all the other airlines. So I was coming back home, going through Paris, coming back home. And I said, I'm going to do a kind act. So I'm looking around, figuring out who I'm going to do a kind act. So I usually smile at people. I compliment people, whoever's serving me. I compliment them. As I'm complimenting them, I'm giving them a prophetic word, but it looks like a compliment. Are you with me? I'm not that deep. I don't go like, ooh, and all of that. I just stand, hey, how are you doing? Yes, you're a very important person. You know, I see that you're gifted. I see that you're talented. And you're going to go far. Do you have any dreams or any vision? Yeah, I dream. Well, that's going to happen. You're going to begin to travel. And really, you know, and they get all excited. So after I do all of that, I find someone that I can be kind to. This is going to be important because we're going to talk about the blessed life. So I picked this woman and her son. 
And I walked up to him. I said, your son looks exactly like you. What's your name? He I said, said, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Cindy, Cindy Trim. It's a pleasure to meet you. So then they started calling. And I turned back and I said, listen, I board first. It's hundreds of people. I board first. Where are you sitting? We're sitting way in, in seat number 42 or something like that. I said, good. Why don't you come on with me? Can I do that? Absolutely. So I waited for them to get their bags. I took them on first. I said, when, when I get off, look for me and I'll take you into the lounge. We've never been into a lounge. Well, you'll go into a lounge with me. It's the first time I'm meeting them. So I take them into the lounge. And when I took them into the lounge, I sat. And we began to chat. And they said, oh, I see you like designer bags. I said, I love them. <laughs> What's your favorite? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know, uh, yesterday was my birthday. And, and, you know, I'm here. And she said, well, you know, my cousin actually does X, Y, and Z. So she says to me, my cousin actually uh, buys and sells for Gucci. And um, I get 80% off of Gucci bags. And any bag you want, from now on, you have 80% off. Honey, I had a picture of the bag I wanted. <laughs> I said, in fact, I just came, you know, we just left Gucci. <laughs> And uh, here's the bag, and I had it, and it was some kind of skin, and it was pink, and I gave it to her. That's the bag that I want. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. <laughs> we are family. <laughs> I got all my sisters with me. Hey, hey, hey. Are you with me? One kind act activated a kind act. And even though I didn't know her cousin, her cousin knows her, she knows her cousin, she knows me, and the rest is history. Amen. Are you, uh, the, I'm talking about the blessed life. Start by being a blessing to someone. It doesn't have to be tangible. You can smile. You can, the lady that cuts my, um, the lady that does the roast, turk, ch roast chicken, the rotisserie chicken, in the grocery store that I serve in, she always tells me when this or a specific roast chicken is done. And then I ask, ask her for special uh, privileges. Like I want her to cut it in a certain way and she does it. And uh, you know, just little special things. So Christmas, I took her this big gift. I took a cologne, I took a this, I took a that, I took a the other. Now when I walk in the store, guess what? She just sees me. Do you need anything? Do you want anything? Huh? And now all the people that work with her, do you need anything? Do you want anything? I got you. <laughs> Why? They heard about the what? The what? Blessing. So Christmas is coming around, and they want a blessing. It's interesting. When we look at the blessed life, we usually look at it from the perspective of what I want. But what about what God wants you to become in other people's lives. Not just what you want, but what he wants you to become in the midst of your circumstances. What he wants you to become in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the setback. I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. And we're going to begin our study on the Beatitudes. How to live the blessed life. There were 400 years of silence that was broken when Jesus pronounced these benediction of blessings. He pronounced them upon his disciples. Here we are introduced to the curriculum taught by Jesus to his disciples. It was a curriculum. It wasn't just off the cuff. It was leading somewhere. The Beatitudes are nine statements made by Christ in a sermon that we often hear spoken about, but don't often think about. And we don't think about its meaning because each one of those statements is like a proverb with a cryptic message. It is precise and it's full of meaning. It's pregnant, each one of those beatitudes or blessing. Each one includes a topic that forms a major biblical theme. So you could spend a whole lot of time or even a lifetime studying each one of those beatitudes. But in this message, in this series, 
We're going to examine each one of them. We're going to pull out the principles so that you can apply it to your daily life. The Beatitudes is their form, a form of benediction. So what is a benediction? A benediction is a pronouncement of divine blessings according to the principle of decreeing and declaring. Job 22, 28 says this, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. In other words, you might be in darkness in an area, but soon as the beatitude or the blessing is pronounced, the light is going to begin to eliminate illuminate things in your life and that was hidden. God's going to begin to reveal those things that were hidden, and it's done because a decree has been made. I remember growing up, and when someone prophesied, they made a decree, and they said to me, God is going to use you in your young age. You're going to travel all over the world, and you're going to be a blessing to people. Well, before that, all I knew was poverty. But as soon as that benediction or blessing was pronounced, it, it shined a light on my way. The word way is the same thing as lifestyle. In other words, there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is going to lead to what? Destruction, right? So that word way, there's a lifestyle that people live that will only lead them towards destruction. So when you see the word way, you can always say, well, he's talking about a lifestyle. Are you with me? And so God wants to make sure that your lifestyle you have insight. What should I do? How should I do it? What are the core values that I should live by? If Jesus was here, what would he do in this situation? So a benediction is a short, concise statement given in the Bible in the form of a decree which gives hope and assurance to the beneficiary. The, be the beatitude is a form of benediction. So the word benediction is a compound word, benediction, diction, Benny, good, well, diction, to speak. Benediction, to speak well of. Benediction. Hence, that means that God is going to speak good over your life. I am decreeing and declaring only good is going to come to you in this season. You're going to live a good life. You're going to live a blessed life. I pronounce it over your life as a benediction. And I establish it in Jesus' name. From today onward, no matter what circumstance or situation you are in, no matter what is going on with you right now, no matter what's going on with your health, no matter what's going on with your sons and daughters, no matter what's going on with your finances, no matter what's going on with your ministry, no matter what's going on with your relationship, no matter what's going on with your profession, no matter what's going on with your job, only good can come out of it. Are you hearing me? I pronounce it as a benediction that no matter what you are facing right now, only good is going to come out of it. Only good. Only good. No matter what you're concerned about, no matter what you're worried about, no matter what you're faced with, no matter what the challenge, no matter what the hardship, only good is coming out of this. I don't know what your this is. I don't know what you're facing. But I pronounce this benediction upon your life today. Now unto him who is able to do the exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. And that power is the blessing. Is the blessing. I decree it. I declare it. I establish it. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a praise in the room tonight. If you receive that, I know you're probably shouting at home as well. We can just feel the change already happening in the room, right? You walked out of you, you're walking out of here a blessed man. You're walking out of here a blessed woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a great day. What a powerful word. We want to thank you for joining us online. And you know, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive, but it's also impossible to give and not receive a blessing as well, because it sets in motion cycles of blessing. 
And we want to partner with you to be a blessing to this world. Cindy Trim Ministries reaches out. Like Dr. Dr. Trim talked about her personal experiences of doing good. But we as a ministry do good from missions around the world to uh, um, adopting He's doing a Thanksgiving drives, feeding the hungry, all of these amazing ways that we bless the community. We want you to partner with us to do so. All you have to do is hit that give button now. You can give one time or you can become a partner and give monthly. But go ahead and hit that give button now. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, go on over to our website. All you have to do is hit cindytrim.com slash give. And it'll take you right where you need to give. We want to uh, invite you back every first and third Thursday to the Four Points broadcast where it's live, it's prophetic, and it's all God. We'll see you then.